Hey everybody, welcome to the third video in my cable management series. In the first two videos, I talked about all the cabling that hangs off the back of a telescope and how it can create drag and uh, offset the balance of your telescope and then, heaven forbid, it snags on something and uh, can actually cause tracking and slewing problems. In the second video, I showed you that there's a stable platform that we can put on the top of our telescope to help anchor everything in place um, in one concentrated area and give us uh, a way to move all the equipment that's bolted to the tripod legs up on top of the telescope. Also, uh, what I will show you in a future video is using the same platform, I can actually attach my guide scope and guide camera to this as well and uh, still have everything riding up on top of the telescope as it was intended. But in this video, I want to talk to you about how we're going to supply power to everything. Everything that we have up here requires electricity and almost all of it will require 12 volts. And for that, <clears throat> I went to a local ham radio store and I picked up a rig runner. And this is a rig runner 4008. And what that means is I have eight ports down here. This port over here is my input and it is a 40 amp input. So I can actually power a lot of equipment off of this. It supplies 12 volts out of all of these and then my fuses up here determine how many amps each one can draw. And these are the stock default fuses that came with it. And I can switch these out um, as needed. I've got a lot of equipment that only requires one or less amps. And I've got two fuses here that allow one amp through. If I wanted to, I could replace many of these with one amp fuses uh, to help better regulate that voltage. In the event that there's a power surge, I'm not going to damage my lower ampage um, electronics. But for now, I'm just running the stock uh, fuses. Um, and I'll show you how I know which electronics should plug into what to make sure that a 10 amp item doesn't plug into a one amp fuse. And it's just a simple label maker uh, putting labels on all of my cables. But this is the lifeblood for everything that's going to run on the telescope, which is probably why they call it a rig runner. What I've laid out here are all the cables that I use to supply power to everything that I'm currently using for astrophotography. And I've got five cables and I have an eight port rig runner which allows me uh, some upgrade um, expansion in the future. And one of the things you may notice is that there's a lot of red and black along this side and I've also got some red and black going on here. And for those of you who are unfamiliar with what uh, a rig runner is and how this works, uh, a rig runner is basically like um, a six-way power strip that you would use for AC electronics in your house, except this does direct current instead. And so you have your, um, you have to keep the polarity correct. Um, alternating current actually switches what's positive and what's negative on the two prongs. Uh, where direct current, it's always negative and it's always positive and it never flips. And so the polarity becomes very important. And if you plug something in backwards, you will potentially destroy your electronics. And what we spend on this stuff for astrophotography uh, is sometimes embarrassingly expensive. And therefore, we don't want to destroy anything by accident. And so somebody who I'm presuming his name was Anderson um, came up with a system which we now know as the Anderson Power Pole. And what we have here is uh, a red and a black um, socket, and they are um, there. There's only one way to connect these um, into the red and the black. Here, uh, you cannot accidentally reverse it and do the red into the black uh, because of how they are uh, shaped here in the front. Only red can plug into red, and only black can plug into black, like so. And as long as you do the correct polarity on your cabling, um, you don't have any risk of accidentally plugging something in backwards and short-circuiting your cameras or any other device that you would be running on this. The beauty of this is, if it's really dark and um, you're with other astronomers and you don't want to use any light whatsoever to see what you're doing, um, you just fiddle with this until it, and it goes in. If you can't tell which one's red and which one's black, um, there's only one way it can fit. It's also fairly secure. Um, it actually takes quite a bit of effort to uh, plug it in and also unplug it, uh, which is nice. Should something like this snag, you're not likely to have it pull out. I mean, it can, given enough force, 
but it's uh, in my opinion, it feels it's a little more snug than uh, some of the USB connection connections out there. So making these cables, I had to hand make all of them, and uh, some of them are. Uh, I just took the standard cable that came with something. Um, I forget exactly which cable this is. It's um takes five amps of current. Um, um, the nice thing is, is these DCs only, um, these RCA jacks, they only fit into one device. So I may not know what this plugs into, but uh, there's only one device it will plug into. Um, but I would literally just follow the cabling back to where the um, whatever uh, outlet this is. This may have been a uh, an AC uh, power plug originally coming off of an AC to DC converter. And uh, I just snipped it off, stripped the wires, and spliced these onto the back. Um, if you don't know what you're doing, uh, it's very easy to get this reversed. And so a really good rule of thumb is anytime you've got a cable like this, you'll see that there will be a uh, either a white stripe or a white dashed line. And that line, if you follow it all the way up, is going to be your positive. And the cable that stays black the whole time is going to be your negative. So just remember, if it's got any type of marking on it that's very regular, in this case it's a white dashed line, in this case it's a white solid line, that's going to be your positive and the solid black is going to be your negative. So just remember, your black connector goes onto the solid black cable and the other cable then obviously must be the red. And so I was able to take all of the cables that I had and splice them together to come up with um, my Anderson power pole. Other cabling I had to actually make from scratch. This cable I actually had to buy the uh, the 12 volt cigarette plug uh, from a hardware store or electronics store, use my own red and black cabling, and then splice my Anderson power poles onto that end. And this cable, um, I had to make, I had to buy the connector for, this is for my um, SBIG camera, and I had to buy the uh, the RCA jack or the coaxial jack uh, that's threaded for the camera, and then um, take my own red and black cable, solder everything together on the inside, and then splice this together. And um, yeah, I got really good at doing cable splicing, and I got really good at doing soldering. So if uh, you need an excuse to get good at doing cable splicing, and soldering, then I highly recommend taking on a project like this. It may look daunting, but it's again, it's really simple. Just remember, if your cable has any marking on it, then that is your positive, and the solid black cable is your negative. There's uh, 101 different videos out there on YouTube and uh, other sources online that you can read about the proper way to um, install an Anderson power pole onto the end of a uh, spl uh, stripped cable. I'm not going to go in and uh, make a video on that because every other video out there that I use to learn is better than any video I could put together for you. So uh, I encourage you to go out there and uh, if you want to take on a project like this, go ahead and research it. Um, and if you have any friends who do uh, ham radio and you uh, feel intimidated about doing something like this, um, maybe uh, you give them a case of beer or invite them over to your next barbecue and uh, talk to them about doing this for you and I'm sure that they would be happy to oblige. Thanks for taking the time today to watch my video. I hope you've learned something new and I hope you've been inspired to get under the stars and take a look at something through a telescope. If you like what I've been doing, please take a moment to subscribe to my channel. It'll be a great way for you to show your appreciation and it's the best way to be notified of when new videos get uploaded. Thank you and clear skies.